But I want to tell you something very interesting. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made an announcement, who is going to buy this well and for him is Jannah. Here comes Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. What did he do? He purchased it. They call him Uthman Ghani. Ghani means he's wealthy, he's rich. He bought the well and for him was Jannah. He did something else and for him was Jannah. What was it? It was the wealth. He used the money. So you can use your money and get Jannah. By giving your money to a cause that is absolutely necessary, something the ummah will benefit from, you are quenching the thirst of a person. Allah says, this man is giving his money to purchase a well. And through that well, he's going to get Jannah. He's healing the ummah. Look at that. Because he's going to allow them to drink. But I want to tell you, not everyone is on the level of Uthman radiallahu an. Not everyone is on the level of Abdul Rahman ibn Auf radiallahu an. They were wealthy people. Some of us don't have that much. When they left this world, they left hundreds of thousands of silver coins and gold coins. Some of us up to this moment, we've never seen what a gold coin looks like. Agreed? Oh, you have. Okay, that's good. My brothers and sisters, are you sure it's a genuine one, brother? I tell you, the hadith then tells us about something that is an even better deal. I tell you what it is. You'll be very surprised, but you know it. Didn't a man earn Jannah because he quenched the thirst of a dog? Yes, of a dog. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu quenching the thirst of the whole of Medina. What level of Jannah is that? Allahu Akbar. And he was already Sahabi, Jalil, one of the top companions. He was already from the ten who was told that for you is Jannah. Here's another means, and another means, and another one. I always sit and think, imagine if we were from among those whom we were told for you is Jannah. What would you do? What would I do? What would we do? I hope that we would do more and more good deeds to say, now that I've got Jannah, let's get a higher level. But unfortunately, man is such that once he knows he got something, he says, ah, now I can sit back, relax, and let's enjoy a few of our last days here because we are going to Jannah anyway. And then you end up losing it. It's like the guy who was dreaming. And in his dream, they were offering him a flake. You know what's a flake? A nice chocolate, right? And he argued, no, I need two flakes. I need two flakes. I need two flakes. The man says, just take one. He says, no, I need two flakes. He says, no, I, just, just take one. And suddenly his eye opened. When his eye opened, he realized it was a dream. So he closes his eyes and he says, okay, just give me one. Just give me the one. That's what happens to us. Subhanallah. Here the hadith is telling you, you can get Jannah by quenching the thirst of an animal. Wallahi, today I want to talk to you about something interesting. We want to help the people who are struggling and suffering with their health. You know, when you and I were unwell at some point in our lives, weren't we appreciative of those who helped us? Our families, you are married, your wife perhaps did for you unimaginable things. She might have cried more than you to Allah, making dua, oh Allah, cure my husband. And here you are not appreciating that. And vice versa. Some of the husbands, they quietly make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, cure the mother of my children. Oh Allah, cure my spouse, my wife, and so on. And imagine when you notice and you see and you are unwell, you feel so good about it. You are half cured. Why? Because people around you are meaning well. It's a sunnah to visit the sick and ill. Why? You're healing the ummah. 